Every day, something dramatic happens in the Caribbean that affects our lives. We'll give you the details. We'll give you the facts on Caribbean Perspective with Eddie Fedrick. Here's Eddie Fedrick. Welcome to Caribbean Perspective. So glad you can join us. The story that takes the lead in today's edition for Thursday, 14th November 2024, and brought to you in association with our friends at Antillian Group. Haiti swears in new prime minister as gunfire at airport hits flights from the U.S. Details after this important message. Believe in our strength, we'll stand by you. Protection from all perils, big and small. Reassurance we give, it's so glad to see. Peace of mind, that's a service guarantee. We look after all our family. Yes, we do at every opportunity. Antillian Group, underwriters of all classes of insurance solutions for your protection and investment. Live well financially. Welcome back. Haiti has sworn in a new prime minister hours after a flight from the United States was hit by gunfire as it made its final approach to the capital Port-au-Prince. Alex Didier Filami was formally appointed on Monday by the Presidential Council after it fired the Caribbean nation's interim prime minister Gary Corneille. Al Jazeera's Teresa Bo reports. Alex Didier Filami, a businessman who promised a political and security crisis has spiraled out of control in Haiti since the killing of President Jovenel Moïse four years ago. There's no elected government or parliament in the country. Gangs continue to expand their hold of the capital, Port-au-Prince, and elsewhere, leaving death and destruction. Last April, a transitional presidential council was set up to lead Haiti towards elections. It appointed Gary Conil as interim prime minister. But on Monday, the same council fired him and installed Alex Didier Filemé, a businessman who promises to hold elections as soon as possible. We will work towards social cohesion, a necessary condition for the restoration of the state and the holding of inclusive, transparent and democratic elections. Only this will grant the state legitimate and constitutional authority. But on the streets of the capital, gangs seem to be the only authority. Fighting the police and Kenyan forces sent in by the United Nations to help restore security. The United Nations mission is underfunded and outgunned. The UN says it's concerned. The Secretary General appeals to all member states to sustain and increase their security support for Haiti, including through multinational security support mission, ensuring that it receives the financial support it needs to successfully implement its mandate and expand, expand deployment and operations. On Monday, the gangs came close to the airport in Port-au-Prince. A Spirit Airlines plane from the U.S. was riddled with bullets while midair. The flight had to be diverted to the Dominican Republic. Gangs say they expect to be part of the negotiations to pacify the country. Neither the old PM and the new one. They don't do anything for Haiti. They are in power, but nobody voted for them. If they want to change Haiti, they will sit down with us to negotiate. But for now, it seems unlikely. Constant battles have displaced hundreds of thousands of people, and almost 4,000 people have been killed this year. A crisis that for now has no end in sight. Teresa Wo, Al Jazeera. The Federal Aviation Administration of America has banned U.S. flights to Haiti for 30 days in the wake of Monday's gunfire incidents, according to a notice to air mission issued on Tuesday. ABC News has more. That country right now is in civil unrest. You've got gang violence that have ta taken over that country as a temporary prime minister has been sworn in to try to keep the peace, but still airlines being impacted. Spirit Airlines says that a flight from Florida was hit with multiple shots while trying to land in Haiti. And then JetBlue says an aircraft uh, flew from Haiti to New York and it was hit by at least a bullet. Let's bring in our transportation uh, reporter, Sam Sweeney now. So Sam, tell us more about the FAA and this ban. 
Well, the FAA ban was a part of a multi-agency decision and ultimately signed off by the FAA administrator himself. And as you said, it puts a ban on all flights for 30 days into Haiti. And in fact, they can't even go under 10,000 feet near Haiti because of this violence. They'll look at that uh, in the next couple of weeks and then they'll decide, is it safe enough to bring planes back in? It is in the best interest of the people of Haiti to have aircraft coming in to the Port-au-Prince airport because they're bringing in essential supplies, medication, food. Granted, the ports are still open in this area, but air cargo is essential. And every day that you don't have planes landing there is a big deal for the people in Port-au-Prince. Absolutely, because they need that, that aid so desperately. You know, Sam, I've heard of airspace closed, obviously, over war zones. Mm -hmm. uh, have you ever heard of any uh, of it being closed because... You know, the chaos and the gang domination of Haiti, this could have been just, uh, you know, gunfire, sort of wild gunfire or targeting planes. Have you ever heard of anything like that where it's essentially this, this chaos uh, that has turned that country into a dangerous place to fly into and out of? It is certainly not unprecedented, and sometimes the FAA will put out warnings about planes flying over certain conflict zones uh, or certain areas with this sort of chaos. Haiti, of course, is very unique in and of itself. And a lot of people are saying, well, why are the airlines still flying in there? Why were they flying in there yesterday with all of these problems? And as I said earlier, it is critical to keep that airport open uh, as long and as much as possible. People need to get in. Aid workers need to get in. Americans need to get out. Uh, the Despite there being a travel warning not to travel there, there are still uh, people with dual nationalities, people going back for funerals or weddings. Uh, there is still commerce, as I said, going uh, in and out of Haiti, and it is critical to have that airport open, if at all possible. But again, now they're taking in the safety of the passengers, the flight crews, uh, and of course those airplanes, and they will not uh, open that up until they believe it's safe again. Sam Sweeney, thank you. You're listening to Caribbean Perspective with Eddie Frederick. In association with our friends at Antillian Group. Underwriters of all classes of insurance solutions for your protection and investment. Live well financially. <laughs> strong winds. Rooftops and other debris are often blown about and can cause great damage. Barbados' Prime Minister Mia Motley has called on leaders attending the ongoing United Nations Climate Change Conference, or COP29, in Azerbaijan to commit to new collective goals that will enable states to reverse the current trajectory of climate change. While delivering Barbados' national statements at the World Leaders Climate Action Summit, she warned the planet is hurtling towards catastrophe. The Barbadian leader put forward seven critical elements which she says can assist. They include the proper capitalization of the loss and damage fund and the dedicated SIDS window in the Global Environment Facility Special Climate Change Fund. Ms. Motley again made the case for developing countries to have access to cheaper, long-term capital and urgently needed financial reforms. Rich countries were also encouraged to deliver on their commitments. She also reiterated a call for a universal carbon pricing mechanism and a global methane agreement. The latter remains underfund unfunded and the first underfunded. The reality is that the loss and damage fund has only attracted $700 million, and this is despite the numerous crises besetting small island developing states, and indeed in our own region, Hurricane Beryl, which has caused serious damage to countries from housing to public infrastructure, and indeed from agriculture to fisheries in my own country. We need to deal with methane. Methane is responsible for 45% of current global warming and is 80 times as devilish as CO2 with respect to warming the planet. This makes it mitigation of methane the most effective way to slow the rate of warming in our world. And I trust and pray that we can have a global methane agreement as Pope Francis led the call earlier this year 
for us to see a parallel track to decarbonization. Finally, we need high integrity carbon markets to ensure that there is fairness and that we need a universal carbon pricing mechanism to remove the disparity between countries in the north and south. We turn to CNC3 Business Watch for some business news as one former Minister of Finance in Trinidad and Tobago advises on the solution for the foreign exchange challenge. While Finance Minister Carmen Britt continues to resist calls to float the exchange rate, a former Finance Minister Minister has suggested a middle ground to address forex woes. Selby Wilson, who served as finance minister for the National Alliance of Reconstruction, says the government could look at the price ban at which the exchange rate is managed. You have a range of price. So they would not allow the price to fall below this, and it would not allow the price to rise above X. Not below Y, and not above X. And it fluctuates somewhere in between those two values. Wilson says this would be determined by supply and demand and as such would not be a full devaluation of the dollar. The suggestion is not foreign to Trinidad and Tobago as according to the central bank, TNT already has a managed float in place. On the central bank website, it states in April 1993, TNT adopted a floating exchange rate regime. Since then, the value of the TT dollar appreciates or depreciates in response to, to changes in supply and demand conditions in the foreign exchange market and the intervention policy of the bank. In practice, the foreign exchange system is a managed float. On Friday, Ansa Merchant Bank and Ansa Bank, in partnership with the Cropper Foundation, announced the winners of the inaugural Natural Capital Grant Challenge 2023. The challenge is part of the bank's Caribbean Natural Capital Hub and is an initiative developed to inspire small and medium enterprises across TNT to integrate natural capital considerations into their business strategies. We were not sure what to expect when we launched the challenge 18 months ago, but the response certainly exceeded our expectations. We received 54 well-crafted entries from a range of industries including agriculture, renewable energy, waste management, and tourism. EcoWash, an environmentally friendly and water conservative car wash company, was announced as the winner, receiving a grant of $100,000. Second was Dendron Biotech, which was awarded 60,000 TT, while Eco Nature Farm won a grant of $40,000 for third place. This was announced that women were the vast majorities of applicants for the challenge. Double tremors rattle sections of Jamaica on Tuesday. More in this TVJ News item. Many Jamaicans were left on edge as two earthquakes shook sections of the island just an hour apart. The first tremor hit 10.50 a.m. According to the earthquake unit at the University of the West Indies, Mona, the quake had a preliminary magnitude of 5.6. It was located approximately 152 kilometers north of Ocho Rio St. Anne. The focal depth was 14.6 kilometers and was reportedly felt across several parishes. But before residents could catch their breath, another quake struck at 11.50 a.m., this time more forceful. Professor of sedimentary geology at the earthquake unit, Simon Mitchell, said it was a 6.8 magnitude earthquake with a focal depth of 23.5 kilometers. Both of these earthquakes are close together and they were situated just south of Cuba on what we call the Oriente Fault Zone. That fault zone does not come through Jamaica. That's the, the parallel fault zone, the one what we sit on. So that fault zone goes south of Cuba and then it goes into northern Hispaniola um, and then, it, then off north of Puerto Rico. Despite the back-to-back -back tremors, Professor Mitchell says it's unlikely Jamaica would experience sufficient shaking that could cause significant damage. While we are feeling the earthquakes, we are unlikely to get sufficient shaking to cause significant damage. Um, bearing in mind the second one was 6.8, nearly a 7. We felt it as gentle gentle shock, um, which lasted quite a long period of time. And the fact it lasted quite a long period of time suggests it's quite a long way away. But it's not really a danger to, to Jamaica. Um, and also, because it's on a different fault zone, it's not going to necessarily make our fault zone move. Um, they don't work like that.
am Eddie Frederick. This has been Caribbean Perspective, a whole new approach to highlighting developments in the Caribbean. In the meantime, please follow us on Facebook and subscribe to our YouTube channel for daily regional news and more in association with our friends at Antillian Group. Believe in our strength, we'll stand by you. Protection from all perils, big and small. Reassurance we give, it's so clear to see. Peace of mind, that's a service guarantee. We look after all our family. Yes, we do at every opportunity. Antillian Group, underwriters of all classes of insurance solutions for your protection and investment. Live well financially.